Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday live stream. So uh, just the title and the thumbnail will uh, suggest we have to take a look at uh, why so many people got it wrong with Bitcoin. And since we front ran them on uh, Bitcoin, should we be talking more about altcoins and uh, what to actually take a look at? So to just jump right in. This was a little piece that I had seen circulating on the on X, or what was called Twitter back in the day. Uh, Jim Cramer admits he was wrong about Bitcoin. Uh, and he states I was premature. Now, when we hear anything from Jim Cramer, uh, usually we go at the exact opposite of what he says, and it usually works out pretty well for us. Uh, so with this one, with him kind of flipping, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit uh, concerned, but it is a little too less, a little too late. And uh, I think there's just a problem with traditional finance, looking at Bitcoin and what it actually is. So this is a, it's a long article. I'm going to paraphrase it in like three sentences, as I like to do, and get things down to business, which it comes out of this. On December 5th, 2022, when Bitcoin was trading for 17150 Kramer urged investors to sell all their crypto, no matter the cost, saying it was never too late to sell an awful position. And of course, the uh, price of Bitcoin rallied. So uh, da, 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 December 5th, let's come over here. And uh, this is the Bitcoin price chart uh, going all the way back to 2013. Let's just, I don't know. Let's go to November 27th, 2022. Let's just back it up a little bit and just see how, how Jim was. Well, Jim was extremely wrong yet again. And when I look at this, it's, it's, it's almost laughable, but it just proves a point which is the point is, is that there's so many experts out there in the world and they're telling you one thing about a market and then you'll see another expert tell you exactly the opposite. And I, like I've always said, there's one thing that two experts can always agree on and that is that the third one doesn't know what they're talking about. So when we see all these experts and they're, and they're talking about, you know, this is, this is a bad investment, this is what it is. I think in all honesty, I wonder how much research Jim actually has done into this. And I wonder how much research most of the experts have done to give us their opinion. Now we live this every day, right? We take a look at portfolio. We watch, uh, you watch the videos like, like this on YouTube. You probably take a look at different white papers. You, you're really into it because if you're here, you're not a tourist. So when I see something like this, I'm like, why do people give the experts so much leeway? And I think it just because we always have. And this is just one prime example of things just getting it wrong. And then just to jump into it, I want you to understand what Jim said, because it wasn't like he was he was saying, oh, this is the best investment of all time. This is going to be so awesome. Everybody should just jump in. This was uh, a video just three days ago, and it's during his like lightning rounds. And I'm not here to 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 pile on Jim Cramer. I, I find him highly entertaining. He is an entertainer. All right. Uh, I think that's one of his disclaimers that he has on the show. So just take a listen to this. And uh, I, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to sound kind of funny because I had to slow it down because he's mumbling and jumbling and getting, getting all over the place. And I just didn't understand what the hell he was talking about, even with the close captions on. So I slowed it down to 0 0.75. No, Jim Cramer is not drunk. It's just that I wanted you to actually hear this. And this is about 20 or so seconds. So uh, let's just take a listen. So let me make sure that you can hear it the right way. Let me pull up the tab itself. And there's, there's Jim in all his glory. So let's just take a listen. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you? Good. I just wanted to know what your feelings are on uh, Clean Spark. CLSK. If you like Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. That has always been my view. And for a while I liked it. Then, you know, I decided, well, you know what? That money's been made. But I was I was premature before. When you make a lot of money, that's something of a fact. Let's go to G Okay, that's it. So I just I had to slow it down because you can just tell that he's very jumbled in what he was talking about because I mean, let's be honest, he made a pretty poor call. So usually when people make a poor call, they don't want to really go into depth about how much they kind of screwed that one up. But I mean, to uh, to Jim's credit, he did make a lot of money on Bitcoin. I mean, he bought it somewhat low and he sold it somewhat at, at the high point. I think he paid off his mortgage. But what he's saying here is, and, and what the caller was asking about was Clean Spark. And Clean Spark is a, uh, a Bitcoin miner here, uh, operation here in the United States. And that triggered Jim to talk about Bitcoin and say, you know, hey, 
you know, I was a little bit premature to sell it, but in all honesty, he really wasn't that premature to sell. He sold it, he made a profit, he moved on. Now, if he would have been smart and uh, done his research and figured out about these things called the four-year cycles, which we talk about ad nauseum on this channel, he probably would have seen that maybe down here was not a bad time to just hold on and just uh, see how things went and then, uh, you know, go from there. But again, uh, there's going to be experts out there. They're going to tell you you're wrong. And uh, you have to, here's the thing, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it's not like they're smarter than you or they're better than you. It's just that uh, they maybe have uh, more of a podium and can actually get more attention because they're on TV, they're on some other different platform. So you're going to see these different experts. And if you ever want to take a look at the experts who have been super wrong, there's a great website called 99bitcoins.com. Uh, under the Bitcoin obituaries. I link this in the description. I love to see this every so often because this is just over the last year. They, they updated it uh, intermittently, but you're going to see that you know uh, across a wide spectrum about just how many times Bitcoin has died itself. And uh, there's different ones from like, uh, you'll have stuff on Twitter. It'll uh, link it to the actual article itself if you want to take a, take a gander. Uh, you can see that it's just every single step of the way. There's somebody who, let's just blow it all up. Yeah, there's somebody who's just going to call it and say, this is dead, this is dead, this is dead. And of course, you know, you see a lot of them over here when we're in like this, uh, this accumulation stage. Look at that. Then of course we go all the way up. And then because it's just the same thing. And everybody around here is going to say the same stupid thing, which is it's a tulip bubble, which I don't, I've never heard of a tulip bubble being 13 years, but whatever. So, I mean, you'll have these and you'll kind of look at this and go, what the heck? But I get it because a lot of people, especially in 2021, they were thinking to themselves, maybe this isn't going to come back. Maybe this isn't a good deal. Maybe these four-year cycles are just full of it. This doesn't make any sense. Maybe I should just uh, pack it in. But now you see that everything's going to be all right. So anyhow, just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention that uh, I know sometimes that the experts seem convincing, but yet again, they are wrong yet again. And uh, before we get into like the altcoins and things like that, I just want to remind everybody that uh, there's a couple of indicators that if you're if you're worried right now, you're like, shoot, I missed this, I, I missed the bull run. This is it. Uh, you know, I should have bought when Rob was buying dollar. I'm just kidding. When I was dollar cost averaging, I'm still there's some I'm still actually no, there's nah, there's some I'm still in the red as far as dollar cost averaging. But you didn't miss anything, and I want to remind you that uh, just because we're making this video today doesn't mean that we can't have a major crash tomorrow. Maybe something comes up where, you know, there's another huge pandemic that comes out, which there's one brewing in China right now. Or maybe there's some different data that comes out that looks at that, oh, inflation is uh, rapidly on the rise. And now we're going to have to raise rates again. Or uh, maybe something comes out about recession news, or maybe something comes out about some kind of infrastructure issue, or maybe another war. I don't know. But all I'm saying is that just because things are going pretty well in a bull market doesn't mean we can't uh, take a step back. Having said that, things are looking pretty good, and I think we're still pretty early. There's a couple different indicators I like to look at. Of course, I look at looking to Bitcoin.com. One of the ones I like to see is this Pi Cycle Top Indicator, and it's been pretty decently accurate, actually pretty accurate, since all the way back in 2011. And what it does, it takes the the 111 day moving average, and the cross when it crosses over the 350 day moving average times two, you kind of get this point where it's like, okay, this is the high point. And actually, it happened over here. Last one was at, damn, it did a pretty good job. 62,000, April 14th. That's pretty good. Well, this is on the one hour, which is I need to, that's uh, really good, actually. That's on the one hour. Now let's, let's go in the 24 hour. And you can see that going all the way back to 2017, it almost nailed it pretty much. 2013, same thing again. 2017, then over here in the 24 hour, it did okay. Got like around 52,000, but whatever. But I just wanted to, to show you that, hey, uh, these aren't coming, they're slightly together, but we got a long ways to go. I mean, look how long it took from all the way over here, even though it came close around 2019. But look at this time. It's looking like two more years. And that's just one indicator. So again, if you think like, oh, I lost it all. Or if you take a look like the another one I'm looking at Bitcoin is the, the Bitcoin cycle master. Take a look at this. You can see right here, I mean, look how far down we're actually at. We're not even in the midpoint, and we've done pretty good so far. 
So we're not in this uh, aggressively valued or overvalued territory whatsoever yet, uh, which you can see that on this one, same thing. 28, 2017, nailed it. 2021, eh, 63,000. That's not bad. Didn't hit the 67,000. Then over here, 1,000 in 2013. So again, lots of time to go. But the question then has to be is, well, okay, I mean, Bitcoin's doing pretty good. And now you got, uh, you know, uh, these geniuses talking about Bitcoin again, and uh, maybe that's it. Well, look, here's the thing. Uh, we've already front run these guys on Bitcoin. We all did a great job as they were twiddling their thumbs and talking trash about it, which some people will say that, you know, either they're uh, totally clueless on it or they're orchestrating it for people to have their apprehensiveness about it so they can buy it up in the background. Could be. So the question is then, is as everybody's talking about Bitcoin, should we be looking at alts? And you know, on this channel, and then tomorrow on Sunday, I always go over all the different uh, alts I've been buying and how I've been dollar cost averaging and my uh, percentage gains and whatnot. You're welcome to come by tomorrow. It's fun times. And um, But the thing you might want to take ask yourself is, what kind of alts should uh, are doing pretty well and what should I actually look at? Because I can't tell you what to buy. I'm not a financial advisor, right? So with this one, a good place to start, and I've always said there's, well, I've, I've said for quite some time that there's two narratives that are going to really run uh, the bull run, which would be AI and gaming. And we've talked about this for the last year and some change. And now we're taking a look, and I think it's going to be three. I think it's going to be AI, gaming, and DEXs. And the reason for DEXs is, is because of the different laws and things that are coming out against the centralized exchanges. So they take a look at what happened to Binance. Take a look at the SEC suing Coinbase, the SEC suing Kraken, and cracking down on pretty much everything they can possibly do. So I think DEXs will make a, make a big play. Where do you want to look? Well, go to CoinGecko. Again, CoinGecko, the one I'm always using. And if you click on Categories, and you're going to see all the different categories. What I like to do sometimes is for giggles is just to take over a look here. You can take a look at the seven day. Just click on the seven day and you can or, you can organize it by which ones are up the most. Now this is only seven days. So you can't really say, OK, well, this is the end all be all. But if you do this for over, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks, you start to get a consensus of where things are going. And again, look what's on top. Chain GPT pad, last seven days is 152%. That's pretty big. And uh, let's see, what are these? Not for sure. So Chain GPT, Open Fabric AI, again, the AI narrative, Dex check, Solidius. And this is 118% over seven days. Market cap's only 46 million, uh, last volume. So not too bad uh, whatsoever. Let's go back. Uh, let's see, what else we got? NFT marketplace, be careful with this because NFT marketplaces could also be gaming as well. Telegram apps, who'd have thunk it? 27%. Discord bots. See, there's some things that I would never even have, have known about. Discord bots are up 47%. Okay. Move to earn. All right. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I'm going to say. Move to earn. That's a pretty good section. Unfortunately for me, uh, Stepin is beating uh, my favorite app, which is Sweat Economy or Sweatcoin, but it's in the second place, so I'll take it. And uh, that's one of those things that I think, I don't think it's going to you know, rule the next bull run. But I mean, for me, it's something that I like. So we'll see. Then of course you got AI, 24% animal racing. Oh, this is pretty much gambling, like horse racing and stuff like that. RWA, real world assets. And if you've been watching the channel, you know that uh, Avalanche has been doing a lot of different things with uh, <laughs> JP Morgan and uh, them moving real world assets across blockchains across the world. So something that I should take a look at. NFTs again, also could be gaming and then gaming or GameFi. Let's take a look. They're 14% for seven days. Not bad. But over the time, it's been quite a bit. Here's what we got. ICP. In seven days, up 13. Immutable X up 26%. It's pretty good. Sandbox, Axie, Gala, Alluvium. I want you to remember these names. Uh, Apecoin, Floki, Engine, Ronin, Echelon Prime, Vulcan Forge, Yield Games, Gods Unchained, Nakamoto Games. These are some pretty big players. Look at Gods Unchained, 74% in seven days. So again, this is one of those things where I could say that, yes, it definitely is. Now, looking for one called Playable. Playable. And I don't see it. So this is what I was talking about. I, I actually put it over here. I cheated. But uh, Playable Games, this is up 
uh, over 30 days, 1,283%. Now, again, am I cherry picking some data? Absolutely. But uh, you have to understand that uh, these are just one of the many games that are popping off now. Did you miss the boat? I don't think you did. I think this is just the first wave uh, as many waves to come. But again, am I telling you to go all in, sell your kidneys, your house, and your kids to buy a playable? No. I'm just telling you that I think that we've got a long way to run. And uh, playable itself, uh, it looks like it's, it's a studio that creates different variable games. They got a max supply of 50 billion. They're also uh, funds as far as like nodes. And of course, it's all about NFTs and uh, being able to own your assets across different chains and being able to move those assets as you play different games across the games that they're going to put out. But this is very early. I don't even know if they have any, have, let's see, do they have games? Well, I guess they do. Nexus or not. Yeah, look at that. I wonder if they're actually playable, playable, or if it's like just demos so far. Anyhow, you get the point. So with these types of things, and of course, you know, Zimar, here's the NFTs and stuff like that. With these types of things, there's a lot of different areas you can get into, and I'm going to let your imagination run wild. And of course, tomorrow, um, not only am I going to talk about the uh, crypto that I've been dollar cost averaging for the Sundays, which was uh, you know different ten or eleven, but once which ones I've been buying the last month or so uh, behind the scenes because I don't tell everybody everything that I buy because I'm sick and tired of people saying, "Hey." You bought this thing and then I bought this and it went down because no one likes to take responsibility for their actions. So I'm just like, I'll just keep that under wraps for a bit. But uh, all these different things we just talked about and the things we just said, uh, I've had on, I've had on the experts. I've had on uh, Crypto Stash, uh, uh, Johnny from uh, Banter, uh, Johnny Hustle, uh, Kagi, and uh, uh, Jesus Martinez from Classy Games. And it's interesting because like even Jesus this morning, he put out this, this tweet. He's like, hey, these are the ones, he said, I told you. And they're all Web3 gamers and that's their, their big thing. And they are the, they know a lot more than I do, that's for sure. Because he said, hey, this is one of the things we called, we called Myria and we called playable games. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's actually true because, well, here's Jesus' uh, uh, X and then also his uh, YouTube. And here we are discussing all these things that he just talked about on September 1st, 2023. And as a matter of fact, if you go to my website, 100% free, Dan Teaches Crypto, I don't even spam you with the email that you used to use to sign up. I just tell you when I update things. But if you go to gaming, the first one's Yatsu. That's a good one with Animoca Brands. But uh, with Johnny Hustle, that was on September 21st. And what was what were his top plays? Vulcan Forge, Immutable X, Dubs, Echelon, Gala. And then Stash didn't give too much. He just says, you know, I like Avalanche and I like some things that are like uh, layer ones. And then Kagi, his plays were Ronin, Alluvium, Immutable X, Game Swift, and Avogachi. And then, I, and then for some reason, I put him down. I don't know why I put him down here. I got to move him up one. Anyhow, uh, and then what were... What was Jesus's big ones? And this was September 1st. Gala, Ronin, Immutable X, Alluvium, Avalanche, Polygon, and Myriad. The one we just took a look at. So again, when I heard about these, you know, I got into them a little bit. Uh, and of course, this is a thing. I, I don't think people realized how big it was going to be, even though I was saying it ad nauseum, but it is what it is. I don't think that you missed anything. I just think you missed the first wave and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Anyhow, that's it for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Oh, there was one more thing I forgot to add, which was, and Jesus said a really, sorry. Jesus is going to come back on the show on Wednesday. And the reason why he's coming back is because he said something very peculiar in one of his Twitter posts. And he talked about how that he's made more revenue on just playing the games and earning the crypto and the NFTs and things like that than he has investing. He said, it's actually way more. And I'm like, hey, you need to come on the show and, and explain that to us because on this show, we're not a big group of gamers, I don't think. I think maybe a small percentage, maybe 20% of you guys are, are gamers, like game, game gamers, but the rest are mostly our investors. So I'm like, hey, come on the show, explain that to us, and then we'll go from there. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, Rob, I'm not gonna play these games, what's the point? You got kids? You got grandkids, you got nieces, you got nephews. Maybe they could, uh, 
might want to help you out for a cut of the action. <laughs> Maybe Christmas is coming up and they're looking for a new blah, blah, blah. And you say, hey, how'd you like to play this game? And, uh, you know, you give daddy half. Something to think about. And we'll have Jesus on the channel in, uh, on Wednesday. Or maybe you just want to start playing games because you want to reduce your stress and actually do something different. It's up to you. But that's it. that is it for today. So, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you coming by on a Saturday. Uh, if it would be so kind, hit the uh, like on the way out and uh, comment. And then.